Hamilton has spent his entire career waiting for this chance. Over the past two weeks, he has seized the moment like few others in NBA history. It was Stockton shot that secured Utah's first ever trip to the finals, ending 17 years of frustration. But the euphoria over securing such an elusive goal was quickly dispelled in Chicago, where Michael Jordan's Bulls took a two-game series lead, as destiny seemed to dictate that a fifth title would soon be theirs. Then last Sunday night, with Jordan on the brink of giving Chicago a nearly insurmountable 3-1 advantage in the finals, Stockton stepped into Utah's huddle and declared that there must be a way to win the game. Stockton simply took over the game's final two and a half minutes. His enormous three wrested momentum away from the Bulls, cutting their lead to two. In rapid succession, Stockton stole the ball from the game's greatest player. And then, with Utah down by a point, Stockton rebounded Jordan's miss and found Carl Malone with a pass that will never be forgotten. To be sure, there were other heroes on a night when Utah drew even in the finals, but on this one Sunday in June, John Stockton refused to let his team lose, and in the process made it clear that the Jazz are a genuine threat to Chicago's fifth title plans. The finals are tied. Game five is next. is the NBA on NBC. The 1997 NBA Finals. Tonight, it's Game 5. The Chicago Bulls versus the Utah Jazz. They call up the decibel center and Utah Jazz fans once again looking to a most Center, Salt Lake City, Utah. We get ready for Game Five of this best of seven NBA Final Series, and we welcome you. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Alvin, along with Matt Kukas and Bill Walton. Now, the big story here tonight: the story concerning Michael Jordan's physical conditions. This Jordan arriving about two hours ago. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. Made his way onto the court just moments ago, and as you see right here, looking a bit shaky. He was up all last night, spent all day in bed, did not eat at all, did not uh, go to the shoot-around earlier today, did not practice, so uh, his status is uncertain. Ahmad Rashad and Jim Gray will have more on this as the game progresses. Matt, this on top of the Bulls, coming off the extremely uh, disappointing loss the other night. A game they led by five with about two and a half minutes to go. Coming off that kind of defeat, what is Chicago's approach tonight? Well, Chicago can't worry about the missed opportunity to win game four, but they can learn from it, especially ways to get Michael Jordan better shots if he can be effective. The Bulls need more of Michael in the post, even if he has to back it in. He can get his own shot against anybody or find one for a teammate. And more of this, set that pick for Jordan. It creates driving space. Utah has trouble defending pick and roll just like everybody else. And get him on the move where he has a chance to get fouled. No free throw attempts in game four for Jordan. And all the Bulls are taking and missing too many jump shots. Not enough offensive rebounding. Just under 10 a game as Dennis Rodman continues to flounder. Now for Chicago to pull off a win here tonight in Utah. Not only does Michael Jordan have to be special while he's not feeling very well, but the rest of the Bulls will have to elevate their game as well. As for the Utah Jazz who have been on fire the last uh, two games, they've certainly turned things around. Uh, Bill, you look back over the course of the illustrious career of John Stockton. There have been many uh, magnificent games, but Sunday night here in Game 4 was a defining moment for John Stockton. Marv, it all crystallized 
for John as he emphatically reminded us that more than anything else, it's a mental game. But John Stockton has not been alone as the entire Jazz team has responded since they returned here to Utah. Now, the offense has found itself. They're getting to the line and making them. They're passing the ball. They're pounding the glass. But in the end, for Utah, their championship dream always comes down to Carl Malone. After a very passive start, he's returned to the physical game. He needs to realize just how much better he is than every single member of this full front line. And when they get in his way, hey, knock him down, and if necessary, step on their face. Now, while everybody else has been throwing the petals, the rose petals at the feet of Michael Jordan, the view from here is, this is Carl Malone's night. He has to show the world just how great a player he is. Marv, the Jazz, they have to win tonight if their dream is going to come true. All right, so it is all coming up. Game five of this best of seven NBA final series. When we come back in a moment, Anna Storm and the Showtime crew followed by the introduction of the starting lineups. In Salt Lake City, the teams continue to warm up for the tip-off of Game 5, coming up at 9.17 Eastern Time. First, let's start with the news on Dennis Rodman tonight. Now, during this series, Rodman has made some offensive and derogatory remarks regarding the Mormon religion. In response, NBA Deputy Commissioner Russ Granick issued a statement this evening. In part, it read, If the statements are as reported, they are obviously offensive and inexcusable. A full report will be made to Commissioner Stern tomorrow, and an announcement of any action can be expected by the end of the day. Now let's move on to the business of Game 5. The series, as you know, is tied at two games apiece, but let's look at just how close the series has been in some key statistical categories. The Jazz have outscored the Bulls by two points over the four games. Field goal percentage virtually identical. Both teams have 86 assists. Both teams have committed 87 fouls. And Utah has one more steal than Chicago, and it's hard to get much closer than that. I'm joined now by Cavaliers head coach Mike Fratello. And Mike, we've talked before how important matchups are in any series and Utah began this one with Jeff Hornacek guarding Michael Jordan. Then after game two they made the switch, they put Brian Russell on him. Why has it been so effective? Jerry Sloan decided he wanted to start out with a straight matchup of Hornacek on Michael Jordan and experimented occasionally with Brian Russell in games one and two. But then in games three and four he went full time Brian Russell versus Michael Jordan. Let's take a look back just how effective this move has been. When we look at Michael Jordan and the number of shots shots attempted and the number of shots made, they're virtually even in the first two games versus games three and four. Let's look at the point productivity in games one and two, 31 and 38. Games three and four, 26 and 22. A drop off of ten and a half points a game between one and two and games three and four. Well, let's look for a reason why. It becomes quite clear it's the foul line. In the first two games, only uh, 28 attempts for Michael Jordan. In games three and four, Brian Russell guarding him, only five free throw attempts. He's done a terrific job of keeping Michael Jordan from getting to the foul line. Early on in the series, it seemed that Michael could find a clear path to the basket. Whether it be in transition, when he would bring the ball down the floor, Jordan would get to the front of the rim and create free throw opportunities. In the half court game versus Jeff Hornacek, he knew that the foot speed would be in his favor. He was never reluctant to take the ball into the red paint area where he knew he would get the free throw opportunity. And when Brian Russell was matched up against him early on, Jordan still felt he could beat Russell off the dribble. From Russell's standpoint, he hadn't gotten a feel yet, even though they would take the hard playoff foul, 28 free throw attempts in game one and two. What's happened in game three and four, however, is Michael has found himself out behind the three-point line, partly because they've been posting up Scotty Pippen so often, also because Michael has been satisfied with staying on the perimeter, getting those clean open looks. Remember in game three, 32 three-point field goal attempts for the Bulls. Michael has to make a conscious effort of not taking the open jumper initially, which what the Jazz are more than happy to give him. They'd much rather have a Michael Jordan behind the three-point line than a slashing, driving Michael Jordan who not only gets to the foul line, but creates shots for other people. So, Mike, a dual challenge for Michael Jordan tonight, not only to overcome Utah's defense, but also his health concerns. As we are getting set for game five between the Jazz and the Bulls, we'll be back with the introduction of the starting lineups right after these messages.
75 degree day here in the Salt Lake City area. The fans both outside and inside of the arena fired up by their Utah Jazz. Much conversation concerning the noise level, the decibel level count here at Adela Center. One of the loudest arenas in all of sports. Just to give you an idea, when the Bulls and the Jazz are introduced. Check out the decibel meter on the left corner of your screen. There you see a 20 would be a whisper, ordinary conversation about a 60, a rock concert in terms of decibel level uh, count 120, jet takeoff 130. Well, uh, keep an eye right there on these numbers as the introductions come forth. And for the introductions, the public address voice of the Utah Jazz, Dan Roberts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Dota Center. This is the NBA Finals game number five. Introducing the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. Starting at forward, wearing number 33, a 6 7 from Central Arkansas, Scotty Pippen. Starting at forward, wearing number 91, a 6 6 from Southeast Oklahoma State, Dennis Ruffin. The starting center wearing number 13, at 7-2 from New Mexico, Luke Lovely. On the guard line wearing number 9, at 6-6 from Miami of Ohio, Ron Harper. On a guard wearing number 23, at 6-6 from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. The Bulls are coached by Phil Jackson. around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! level count. Noted 
ring announcer Michael Buffer adding to that decibel level count as we get set for game five between the Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz. And for more on these two clubs, let's check in with the Dean, Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Mark. At 3.30 this morning, Michael Jordan woke up with flu-like symptoms. He had a stomach ache and a headache, and he couldn't go back to sleep. He threw up all night, and as reported earlier, he missed the shoot-around. But he was in bed all day and continued to throw up. As a matter of fact, he got in here early. When I went to talk to him back in the back room, he was in a dark room trying to get some rest, but but still throwing up. And, Marv, I talked to him. I said, how do you feel? He said, I really feel horrible. But his history in games where he's either been hurt or sick has been bad news for the opponent. And as you can see, he's ready to go tonight. Marv? All right, thanks, Ramon. And the Utah Jazz control the tip. Bill Oates, Stu Evans, Dan Crawford are the officials. The question is, how long can Jordan go and how will... Uh, Phil Jackson spot him during the course of the game. Nice. With the first bucket of the game. Well, the key for Utah tonight is offense. The defense will be there. They've got to get well over 100 points. And a foul is called as uh, Pippen made his move. He took the hit from Jeff Hornacek. The Chicago Bulls have not lost three straight games since the start of the 1990-91 season. The Bulls have not dropped three straight since January of 95, two months before Jordan returned to basketball. They have not dropped three in a row with Jordan since early in 90-91. And Hornacek with a quick second foul. And the Bulls going to a strategy which was very unsuccessful in game four, and that was posting up Scotty Pippen. The Bulls got very little out of that. It started the game with that, and here comes Shannon Anderson. Well, Shannon Anderson replacing Jeff Hornacek. Shannon with a very nice reception. He missed games three and four, remaining with his family in Atlanta following the death of his father. His dad died last week after a long battle with throat cancer. Bill Oaks calling a three-second violation. And once again, trying to go inside to Scotty Pippen in game four. They went 16 times on post-up for Scotty Pippen and only came away with five scores. Not a good percentage. But you can't force that. Utah's going to sag in and clog it up. you got to take what's there. Try Jordan early. Get him interested. Stockton taking Hopper into the corner. A long play by Rock to start. Fired up a three for the air ball. Too far out of his range there. I just don't think Carl had any idea what the shot clock was. And Jordan trying to slip it. And then pull back and hit. So Michael Jordan, despite visibly shaken by the flu symptoms, connecting from the corner to tie the game at two. You now you can see the look on his face and in his eyes. He is nowhere near himself, but still can be a very effective player. No fadeaways there for Carl Malone. As far as Michael Jordan, they should set some hard picks on him. Scotty, such an important play here tonight with Jordan struggling physically. The officials check it out with each other. And Dan Crawford, the, the outside referee, said last touch by Chicago. I think in Hugh Evans, you have the, the top referee, the one referee that every single player would like to see here each game in the finals. Brandon Anderson. One looking rookie from the University of Georgia being guarded by Michael George. But Ron Harper's defense on John Stockton will be critical for the ball. Ulster tag and knocked away. Jordan to the crossover and lost it. The play by Longley to break up that uh, lead pass attempt. Stockton over. Yes. Utah four. Chicago two. Why would you ever run away from a man with the ball in scoring position, and particularly John Stockton, who is certainly in the zone? But Chicago's transition defense way out of whack there. The Utah Jazz have got a few running opportunities. Look at Stockton again. So quick to the ball. Anticipation. And here comes Russell. And on a switch by Hopper. Get to the hoop here with your car alone. Puts the ball. 
Robin. A little different attack that time by Robin. He kept his feet in game four. He was flopping on that play. A triple. Able to get that uh, dribble alive once again. And a loss. He thought he was fouled. There's Malone with Rockman back. Numbers defensively for Chicago. Utah needs to play smart here. They're a little overexcited. Russell for three. And Rodman rebounds and pops it down to Pippen. And as Rodman has been hearing it from the crowd, the crowd reacting to those disparaging remarks concerning the Mormons that uh, Rodman made. And his teammates also not happy with the, the two trips that he took to Las Vegas in these two off days in between games four and five. On that last play, Carl Malone had excellent position on Rodman with him on his back. Just didn't make sure to catch the ball. But at the other end for Chicago, and we see Phil Jackson yelling, people are driving to the basket, trying to draw contact and getting some contact, but not getting to the foul line. In game four, Chicago only five for 12 in the line. You can see the crowd reacting. They wanted a technical foul call on Phil Jackson, who was all over the official, and Crawford. Way off. First the tag, able to reach for him. And a foul. Well, apparently, the ball was uh, deflected out of bounds by Chicago. Will be Utah ball. Well, we see the problems that the Chicago Bulls are having offensively. Not enough running opportunities and poor execution in the half court. The result of all those numbers. Far back to the Phil Jackson altercation with the referee. These referees are going to be extremely patient tonight. Nobody has gone over the edge at all in this series. Veteran players, veteran coaches. These refs are going to let the guys on the court decide it. Offer was called for that foul. Again, it all comes from the pass by John Stockton. Malone works so well, Rodman picks up his first foul of the night. But no pressure. You see Harper's arms way down. I and mean, when you got that kind of position, there is absolutely nothing Dennis Rodman or anybody else can do against Carl Malone. But Bill, the careless foul. Clearly Rodman was beaten on the good pass and position from Malone. You might as well just let him go at that point. But just a little nudge in the back certainly wasn't going to affect the shot at Carl Malone. So now you're going to start saying that Dennis is a disciplined player? I didn't say that. <laughs> well, you said it was careless. That's, Matt, be very careful. <laughs> Off the clever question. <laughs> Brian Williams has checked in, replacing Luke Longley. It's Utah 7 and Chicago 2. Barb, Utah's got the quick start that they needed to keep the crowd into it. And Michael Jordan able to line drive at home for his second field goal. Jazz up by three. Five minutes gone by. Playing with that bruised shoulder. Heard it there two games ago. He's been very quiet offensively, but that time, called for the block. And that's a quick two on Hoffer. And a quick timeout being called. Chicago will talk it over. Michael Jordan coming into this game five, clearly under the weather but still out there giving an effort, getting high in the air as he goes to the baseline for the jumper, then comes up short, and this is the leg showing a little effect. Never got a good look at the basket there, and this time coming off under control, getting high in the air once again as Michael trying to find his offense. But Michael's the only guy doing anything. He's got their only points in the game. Everybody else standing around. Somebody's got to get aggressive. This is an ugly offensive start for Chicago. But I think they've got to like this tempo, just as the other game was uh, 70. 73 in game four. Chicago wants to keep it in the 70s or low 80s. Stockton got the step. Stockton coming off the brilliant finish on Sunday. Extends to a 9 4 Utah lead. Smart Harper. play by John Stockton going at Harper with two fouls and he let him go. Jordan being played by Russell. Yes. 
Ron Hopper from downtown. It's the Jazz 9 and the Bulls 7. The Bulls let Stockton get so deep before they really put any sort of body contact on him. Shannon Anderson can't find the range. He's going to have to have a big offensive game. Anderson and Russell are going to have to drill from outside. Ryan Williams handling for the first time. Ryan Williams keeping it alive, and he drew the foul. Oh. Oh, John Stockton, a big role for Ron Harper is trying to keep him pinned to the sideline and force him to the baseline. He does neither there as when Harper straightened up, Stockton took advantage of the opportunity to go to the basket. And if you look at John Stockton, the first two games of this series, at Chicago, they lost to both. Really wasn't getting it done. But since they've got home to the friendly confines, here in Salt Lake City, it's been all John Stockton. Foul called on Shannon Anderson, putting Brian Williams at the line. Brian Williams has been a major contributor during the course of the playoffs. Now, this is the, uh, the normal Jerry Sloan substitution. John Stockton gets the rest just past the midway point of the first quarter. And the uh, three-year guard from uh, Boston College, Howard Isley, checks in. On the last two plays, I saw something that I haven't seen very much of throughout this series. Dennis Rodman actually jumped for a rebound, wasn't in traffic at the defensive end, and then at the offensive end, he kept one alive for Brian Williams. That is a good sign for Chicago. Well, the Jazz up 9-8. Isley handling against Steve Kerr, who just checked in. Steve Kerr had his... Had a long night, actually uh, chasing around John Stockton in his 25 minutes uh, in game number four. He's had a long series, Mark. Kerr, an excellent player, just no contributions. He's kicked ball, and a, uh, a new 24 will be called. Uh, Kerr said after the game Sunday he was so exhausted he could barely see straight. He had spent so much time chasing Stockton around. He said it's it's not so much his sheer strength as it is the conditioning on the part of John Stockton. You should see Stockton work out in the weight room. Now, he's certainly not in Carl Malone's class, but... Ball well, knocked away by Malone, but able to recover. There is the first bucket for Shannon Anderson. The Jazz up by three. The initial offense for Utah has been a little shaky, but the scramble plays have worked for them. They've got to tighten it up at the beginning. Pippen, trying to protect it. First attack with a good play. And here comes Isley. Isley for Malone. Utah by five. That's the fast break that they need. Key by the defense, Ostertag, the outlet. Lots of guys running. Scotty trying to force here, draws the foul. Foul committed by Anderson off that fake. Ostertag fading away, reaches him with those extremely long arms, gathers the ball up, and then finds Isley, who bobbles it himself. You got four on two, the spacing, the timing, runners behind the ball, perfect execution, Utah fast break. Well, that was an opportunity for Dennis Robinson to take a hard foul and make Carl Malone earn them from the line. But at the other end, Chicago's offensive end, we see that effort to force things, trying to go to the basket, trying to draw fouls, not getting whistles at this point. Chris Morris has come on for Brandon Anderson and Jordan. He's been out. At the force, Morris, two guys on you fading to your left. Chris Morris just uh, hit the deck, fell down at midcourt. Back up is uh, Pippen and, and Morris. Isley, nice move off the dribble to beat Kerr. The set offense, everything clicking right now for Utah. Here's Pippen for three. Bill Jackson wanted a timeout. He was very unhappy with the defense at the other end. And Scotty Pippen never saw the timeout ticket. They're on their feet. Here's the Delta Center. Shot clock at four. Morris.
by the Chicago Bulls in the midst of a jazz run. Phil Jackson wanted a timeout. Michael Jordan was trying to call the timeout, but because of the noise and the confusion, not getting it, and Michael relaxing on defense, backing off the dangerous Chris Bars from the perimeter. And Phil Jackson, not happy at all, he wanted that timeout. 9-0 run by Utah. Antoine Carr, on the other hand, extremely happy as his Jazz have hit six of their last seven from the field. Let's check in with Jim Gray. Jim? All right, during that last timeout, I asked the Jazz coaching staff if they have any plays designed to go after Michael Jordan because he's ill. I was told by the coaching staff that Jerry Sloan doesn't know that he's ill and doesn't want to know that he's ill, and he doesn't want his players to know. He wants them to play as though he's full 100% strength. Mark? All right, thanks, Jim. From the coaching point of view, Matt, I, obviously that does make sense. Well, you know, again, you don't want to, you always want to make Michael Jordan work defensively, but you don't want to take your team out of what they normally do. Now committed by Pippen, that is his first. We have three minutes to go in this first quarter, and the Jazz up by the count of 18 to 8. A reminder, after the game, we hope you tune in to the live post-game interviews and broadcast straight from the Delta Center on NBA.com. That's the official website of the NBA. Carl Malone at the line here for two. Never foul a jump shooter, but Scottie Pippen is really struggling. He picked up his first foul on Carl's shot attempt. Carl Malone's free throw is getting much, much better after the disappointment in game one. More attempts and certainly the great percentage and the two clinchers in game four. Scotty Pippen over three tonight. That's two straight bad first quarters for Scotty. Malone, as you saw, five of six in game four, including the, uh, the two front free throws right at the end of the game. Uh, the look on Michael Jordan's face. He is so frustrated, he cannot give up offensive rebounds on missed free throws. And for Jordan, that is his first foul. And the man he is frustrated with is Brian Williams for not blocking out Greg Ostertag as the Chicago Bulls making mistake after mistake now at both ends of the floor. Matt, I know you were always shooting the free throws, but as a rebounder, you step up the lane, toward the line, not to the basket. You come back to the basket after the miss. I used to just try to grab one of their shorts and hold them. Yes. Malone <laughs> able to keep it alive. It's a 10-0 run by Utah. They lead 19-8. And they're doing it with John Stockton on the bench, getting a rest with Howard Isley on the floor. Here's Isley. Look at Ostertag go to work. And it leads to the foul call. Well, this is just not a strong front line duo for Chicago right now. Brian Williams has not been rebounding. He was involved in the defensive play, and Tony Kukoc has his problems defensively all the time. He's clearly wiped out of there by Greg Ostertag. And Kukoc, who just came on, called for the foul, his first. Matt, you mentioned not a strong front line for Chicago. I think that's what Carl Malone has failed to realize. Ostertag, a fine free throw shooter. Ostertag with the chest bump. But... There's no Maurice Lucas on this front line. There's no Kevin McHale or Elvin Hayes that can slow down Carl Malone. He should just be killing these guys. It says Brian Williams and, and, and guys who can't guard anybody like Tony Cooper. Utah now up 21-8. Fair pass by Cooper. Retrieved by Pippen. Here's Kerr for three. Pippen with the rebound. And the foul is called. Foul on Ostertag. That is his first. And a sarcastic clap of the hands by Scotty Pippen, who has been begging for calls this whole first quarter, coming out with the mindset to take the ball to the basket, not getting a whistle this time, the little reach-in foul, and the sarcastic applause. So it's now 21-9. Jazz, a reminder, tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, 12-9 Pacific. NBC Sports, proud to present the 97th U.S. Open, the first of four days of live network coverage. That'll be 
direct from the Congressional Country Club. First round coverage beginning tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the East, 12 noon Pacific, right here on NBC. Our Boaster Tags having his first real positive contribution of the series. Hello. Carl continues to favor the outside shot as Kukos has no clue what's going on. Here's Morris. Well, Chris Morris has also been a contributor in this series. Chris Morris has had his ups and downs as a member of the New Jersey Nets and with head coach Jerry Sloan. Well, you're right, Bill. You should never take your eye off the ball in that situation. But since he is not looking, Steve Kerr should never throw that pass. So it's both players at fault there. But a nice conversion by Chris Morris, able to adjust in the air, use the glass. A 14-1 run by the Jazz. Brian Williams. Nice move by Williams. Crowd wanted to travel. Utah 23 and Chicago 11. The Utah Jazz looking to go up three games to two with game number six coming up in Chicago on Friday night. Here's Morris for three. And the rebound comes to Kukoc. Utah should post up Ostertag. Kukoc cannot stop him down low and Ostertag's having a fine game. Good head fan, Brian Williams, hit from behind by Ostertag. So that's two on Greg Ostertag. Well, Brian Williams down on the post, making a strong move to his offhand, the right hand, and using the glass nicely. And then Ostertag just falls asleep. Brian Williams waited, waited, and then when he sensed that Ostertag had already snored twice, he said, hey, drop step to the baseline. For Greg Ostertag, easily his best start in this NBA Finals series. Just sat down after picking up a second foul, but five points and five rebounds for Ostertag. Replaced by Greg Foster, one of the heroes in Game 3 last Friday night. Marv, Chicago has 11 points. Uh, you know, we talked about them coming out with fire. Uh, we just haven't seen it. Jordan hit a couple early. Nothing since. It's been forced, forced play, forced play. Utah's defense very sharp. Well, I said they wanted to keep the score down. <laughs> they wanted Utah to be a lot closer to them. You mentioned they should post Ostertag. They should also post uh, Carl Malone. They've been almost going exclusively to the pick and roll. But they got mismatches galore inside. John Bushler on the floor for the first time, and he's defending on Mars. Here's Malone. Yes. Carl Malone with seven, and the Jazz 25. The ball's 12. What kind of defense is that? You double to you, and then both guys back on the body. Emphatic dunk. And the foul. Scotty Pippen with the head fake, and then drew the foul. It's it's on Malone. Well, Scotty Pippen has been trying to get to that basket ever since the game started. Finally able to clear himself free of Chris Mars, and then going up big time and challenging Carl Malone with a strong finish. And he says that the injured left foot is feeling better. Still uh, cannot penetrate the way he would like because he has problems planting the foot and then cutting to the basket, but he's we got to find the rhythm. Matt, do you think Scotty lights up when he sees Chris Morris guards him? <laughs> Foster block and foul. Well, Pippen got a piece of the ball and the hand. Well, I see a little different Scotty Pippen just in the last minute or so since Michael Jordan has gone to the bench for a rest. Now it looks like he wants to take it on his shoulders at the offensive end, and they're making a good hustle play at the defensive end. And with Michael under the weather, not effective, Scotty is really going to have to lift it very high. And for those who may have just tuned in, as we reported at the start, Michael Jordan suffering from flu symptoms, did not go to the shoot-around, shot out practice. Up all last night, spent all day in bed, did not eat at all. And you can just see the look as he stepped out of the floor with the rest of his teammates uh, as the Chicago Bulls took uh, the floor some uh, 10 minutes before uh, 7 o'clock uh, here in Salt Lake City. But one thing that's held true in this series, Mark, for the Bulls, Scotty and Michael have not played well at the same time throughout the series. 
Bushler had it knocked away. Kukoc on the recovery and a foul. It's Tom Foster. Good call. There was a big scramble for the wild ball. Foster came and bumped through everybody. Put bodies on the floor. The Jazz over the foul limit. And Brian Williams back to the line. So here are the uh, Chicago Bulls who spent very little time at the line the other night. In fact, they were 5 for 12. The five free throws, the second fewest in NBA Finals history. Uh, one of the most important things in playoff basketball, any basketball, is hustle after loose ball. Fre Greg Foster grabbing on to the jersey of Brian Williams there. As in the early part of this first quarter, it was Utah out hustling the Bulls for loose ball in the last couple of minutes in Chicago. And the Bulls are now 5 of 9 at the line. 20 seconds left in this first quarter. Some pressure being shown by Chicago, which has been a rare sight in this series. Well, they usually bring it after made free throws. They haven't gone to the line. And we're down to five seconds of the quarter. Nicely from alone. One and six ten seconds remaining in the quarter. Now Pippen fires. A fiery start for the Utah Jazz. It's the Jazz 29 and the Bulls 16. One quarter complete. Here in Salt Lake City, you are watching the NBA on NBC. You're watching the NBA Finals on NBC. To the second quarter, Marv Albert, Matt Jokic, Bill Walton, to look at four future Hall of Famers and the rundown thus far tonight. Carl Malone with a strong start. He's hit four of his first eight for nine points. Carl Malone dominating the action early on the perimeter end of the paint, delivering against Dennis Rodman's porous defense, running the floor, his specialty. The jumper, something he's added this year in the last play to close the quarter. We talked about running them over and stepping on him. That's what Carl Malone has done in the first quarter you love to see all those shot charts in the paint there forget the perimeter stuff particularly that three-point one utah 11 of 19 from the field in a uh, red hot opening quarter chicago just 5 to 15 michael jordan is back putting the maroon on chris mars so Jordan has six points, three of six from the field. The first quarter that saw at one stretch Utah go on a 14-1 run. John Stockton is back, as is Jeff Hornacek. Malone up front with Foster and Mars. The basket will count. And the foul. Well, Michael Jordan coming out, resting the last couple of minutes of that first quarter. Just a little right-to-left move to easily shake Chris Mars. But then Carl Malone comes right back. Stockton gets tied up with Kerr right there. They call the foul there on Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr very frustrated. John Stockton has a way of getting underneath his skin. And Phil Jackson was saying yesterday that he was very upset with Steve Kerr for being manhandled by John Stockton in Game 4. He wanted Steve Kerr to be more physical and challenge John Stockton because he just can't grab him around the neck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> good point. Thank you. And a uh, three-point play. The master by Malone was good. The foul away from the ball. The free throw converted by Stockton. 32-18, Utah. The bound up is Foster, defending on Kukoc. Here's Kerr. And a loose ball foul against the Bulls. It's on Bushler. And now, Mar, for the first time, Carl Malone has gone to the bench. And Utah has got to find some offense. Antoine Carr had some good moments. Needs one right here. Posting up. Jordan off the fake. 
would have. He'll go to the line for two. So Michael Jordan, who did not go to the line incredibly at all the other night, will go to the free throw line right here. Here's Anquan Carr getting right to it. Or that high post offense for both Carl and Antoine Carr is wide open because the big guys for Chicago cannot guard on the perimeter. So Michael Jordan, who in a rare occasion did not go to the free line, free throw line at all the other night, only the, uh, the second time in his postseason career that he went an entire game without a free throw. Well, the Chicago Bull offense, the triangle offense, is built on a lot of jump shots. And the Bulls have not been running a lot of pick and rolls, have not been getting driving opportunities for Jordan. Oh, pretty fast to set it up for Carr. That's the beauty of John Stockton, Mark. He plays 100% to make the other guys the star and only shoots when it's a desperate situation facing a loss. Jordan looks for trying to keep it alive. Chris Mars has done a nice job. And here's Stockton checking the floor and then putting the move on Kerr. Call. Every Jordan shot attempt has been off the dribble going to his left. Except that one. Drive the fan away. Foster with the rebound. Well, the Chicago Bulls are going to so much one-on-one -on -one play. In fact, in the game, they only have two assists, so they're not running their offense. Passing is not being crisp. Just too many one-on-one -on -one shots. Corner set on the offensive board, and they get the new 24. That, you talked about the one-on-one. -on -one. The team game for Utah has been far superior since this series shifted to Salt Lake City. Pass. Well, John Stockton with a rare mistake. Michael Jordan draws the foul. Jordan went to the left hand on the drive, and he sent it back to the line. But first, a timeout call by the Jazz. Well, look at the snow-capped majestic mountains here in Salt Lake City and our terrific views of Salt Lake City and the spectacular mountains here in Utah coming from the Miller Eagle. Uh, John Stockton, one of the best pick-and-roll players in the history of basketball, and this play has been very good to the Jazz in the first half of the last two games. That's an outstanding conversion. Second half, a little better defense. Here's Carl, uh, Antoine Carr setting that pick for John Stockton, and then the roll to the basket, and poor rotation by Tony Kukoc enables, enables Antoine Carr to get the nice little bounce pass up in the air before defense can react. Michael Jordan looking exhausted here in the second quarter, playing with flu-like symptoms. Also looked exhausted in the fourth quarter the other night, although he was able to uh, pick things up. And that pick and roll has been very good to Utah, almost so much that they forgot to go to inside game because they're getting so many good scores out of any pick and roll with John Stockton or Howard Isley on the left side of the floor. Michael Jordan has had to carry so much of the load as Hornacek back-to-back horrible turnovers for Utah. Puts moves on Hornacek. So the Jazz now leading 36-24. And despite the, the physical conditions, the uh, tough time that uh, Michael Jordan has had because of the uh, the flu, he does have 12 points. Uh, Tony Kukoc just ran over from the weak side just to get the ball out of Stockton's hands. You can see Utah scrambling now. Nice Puts it away. That's his first field goal. The Jazz up 38 24. Two coach for three. And this is the best spurt of the night by the Bulls. And it's a kickball, so they get the new 24. And Marvin starts with their defense for Chicago. Hornacek just throws one away. Harper gets it, and then this is a helpless situation. Jordan is going to score on any three guys guarding him there. Bulls in the second quarter have outscored the uh, Jazz 11 9, and Jordan has eight of those 11 points. Hornacek off the fake. And 
Pippen. Able to glide in for the rebound. Jordan finding Longley. And the Jazz now leading by just nine. That's Chicago Bull basketball. When they get a rebound, they'll get a steal. Get out and run and attack the basket. You saw Jordan put all kinds of pressure on John Stockton. And Jerry Sloan coming right back with Carl Malone. He's seen enough of this offensive futility. Well, Stockton trying to force it. Looks like he got a foul call. Cook coach. Jordan shoveled to Hopper over to Pippen, and Scotty Pippen went last. The 16-point lead has been cut to seven. And Jerry Sloan falls for time. So the good run by Chicago. It's an 11-2 spurt, 7-0-4 remaining. In this first half, the Jazz now up 38-31. to uh, Longley open because all eyes on Jordan. Once again, Jordan draws the crowd. Even the Bulls now getting away with the extra pass, just attacking and attacking. Jim Gray back at the Delta Center. Jerry Sloan during that timeout told his team, hey, guys, you're standing around feeling sorry for yourselves after you've missed shots or not getting a call on offense. If you're not going to get back on defense, we can't win this game. Don't count on them messing up the game. You go out and win the game. Now let's go down to a minor shot. All right, thanks, Jim. Bill Jackson not talking anything at all about offense. His subject was defense. That's the way they get back into this game. Mark? All right, Amar, that's exactly what the Bulls have done. A 16 point lead is down to seven and a three second violation is called to give it back to Chicago. Luke Longley doing a marvelous job jumping around behind and towering over Carl Malone. And Hopper and Stockton got involved. The, uh, the foul on Stockton for the push and how things have uh, turned here in the second quarter. Well, Ron Harper gets so few scoring opportunities, and mainly because it's John Stockton usually sloughing off him, worried about Pippen and Jordan, so it's a good play once in a while to go inside to Ron Harper, who is 6'7", towers over John Stockton. Substitution, center switch, Foster out, Ostertagian. The biggest problem for Utah is they stop playing offense. Their defense is always going to be there. they got to get to the point where, hey, we're looking at 110 points per game, and Hugh Evans trying to tell everybody, let's quit the pushing and shove and let's play basketball. Evans came over to uh, join Dan Crawford because uh, Stockton and Arthur were pushing on the lineup. Jordan to the crossover. Yes. Not bad for a guy playing with uh, <laughs> flu symptoms. But give Utah some credit. They forced him left every single time. Jordan's going to score 30 or 40 points. There's no question about that. And as Malone made his move, he was held. The Bulls in the midst of a 13-2 run. Well, there's a theory that if you're hurting some or not feeling particularly well, that it heightens your awareness and concentration. You take a little more effort with the minor details. As Michael has been very precise on getting up in the air and shooting those jump shots. Foul on Longley, substitution. Tony Kukoc sitting down. Dennis Rodman hearing it. But the crowd, he checks back in. Here's Stockton. Stockton has hit three of four. He has seven. It's Utah by seven. We're halfway through the second quarter. Dennis Rodman a little bit more reluctant about taking those outside shots. Pippen able to go glass. Bill Jackson has been upset about the shot selection among other activities of Dennis Rodman. And why not? Dennis, not a good offensive player by choice. Carl Malone trying to deliver and does. did not get the call. The Jazz 42 and the Bulls 35. Malone has 13. Bulls have made their last six shots. Here's a mismatch. What a sec on help. Tip it off the fake. Dumped it off. Longley. Yes. And it counts. Oh, nice basketball by Luke Longley. First of all, when it went into Pippen originally, there went Greg Ostertag for the double team. Longley did the right thing, just following in his heels. Pippen couldn't get it to him, so he went away. And then he came back again. And it's a for big men cutting to that open area, presenting a big target for that player that is double teamed. 
The post-up game for Chicago is really strong right now. Their free throw game is absolutely deserted them. But Pippen is scoring in the post. Jordan is passing and scoring in the post. And when big guys move, great things happen. And Longhead continues to have problems at the line. What a four the other night. Here's Malone with a wild fadeaway. Bad shot by Paul Malone. Oh, and a worse foul. Three on Malone. Things breaking down offensively. Terrible foul by Paul. He needs to play the whole game. He takes a disastrous shot and then comes right in. You're not going to steal that ball. Dennis has great hands and great tipping ability to himself on those rebound attempts. Clearly a frustration. First of all, shot by Carl Malone. I don't, he's taking some wild shot. I don't think I've ever seen one like that. Over the limit. Dennis Rodman has not scored in two games. A reminder coming up Friday on Dateline, the Red Pack is back. You can find out how the uh, legacy of Frank and Dino and Sammy and the rest is affecting a new generation of Americans. That's uh, Dateline Friday. Oh, what a follow. Hopper thought he was fouled. Dateline Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern, just prior to game six of our NBA final series right here. NBC and viewers on the West Coast will see Dateline Friday after the Bulls and the Jazz. What once was a 16-point lead is down to three. Ostertag. Ostertag using the ball off the mismatch. Well, the Jazz need to keep their poise. They're going to play without Carl Malone the rest of this half. The Bulls are coming back. Shaky play right now for Utah. 20 left in the first half. Hornacek trying to shake off Jordan. And now Rodman defending on Carr. Carr wants to take him to the basket. Shot clock at five. Ostertek. And it's a traveling violation. Basket will not count. Frustration, disappointment by Carl Malone and Jerry Sloan. Chicago needs a timeout right now. Ostertag has to deliver that ball. Too careless. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report. Hannah Storm will be joined by that man, Charles Barkley of the Houston Rockets. At the moment, Charles looking on the low-key side. And his teammates, of course, eliminated in six by the uh, Utah Jazz in the Western Conference Finals. We'll also get a preview of the U.S. Open Golf Championship, which will get underway tomorrow at the Congressional Country Club. That is all coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report. Four minutes and five seconds to go in this first half here in Salt Lake City, Utah. It is game five of the best of seven NBA Finals series. The series tied at two at one point. Utah led by as many as 16. Chicago has come roaring back. They've hit eight of their last nine shots. Here's Jordan for three. Most attack, not able to handle it. And a loose ball foul is called. For the Bulls, their fourth team foul. It's on Rodman. That's his second. The wild battle for the ball. You look at Ostertag in the middle. They call that a foul? That's terrible. <laughs> Ahmad just reporting from the Chicago bench and the conversation with Jordan and Pippen. Questioning Jordan uh, how he's feeling. He's feeling fine. Now that's, uh, I would say, a relative description. <laughs> and a foul as uh, Jordan made his cut. Antoine Carr called for the push. Utah over the uh, foul limit. So Michael Jordan spending time at the line here in this first half in contrast to what took place in game four. I was a little surprised that the Bulls and Michael Jordan coming out of that timeout and settling for the three-point shot on the pick and roll play because Michael has been taking the ball to the basket, drawing some fouls. The officials are used to seeing that. And of course, you've got the Jazz in the penalty, put the pressure on them. Michael Jordan, his percentage of the points 
during the season, coming up and in the finals, having to carry that load, and along with Scottie Pippen, really the only two guys who can say that they've been doing it. Well, Bill, in particular, with uh, the way Chicago's offense has dipped, as the, fi uh, as the finals have progressed, uh, as the playoffs have progressed. And Jordan with 12 of his 16 points here in the second quarter. It's down a three-point Jazz lead. And the steal by Jordan. Right behind the back on Russell. He turned it around and hit it to Pippen. And told by Jordan. What a play by Michael Jordan. Well, Chicago is in that mode now. Any mistake made by Long rebound, steal. They are getting out and flying. With Cos lead is down to one. They led by as many as 16. Shot clock at six. Foster off the double team. The fan shot. Fired it up. And the Bulls actually have a chance to take the lead. They're in the midst of a 23-8 run. Jordan. Jordan with Scotty Pippen filling the lane for the nice finish, and Jordan not taking anything for granted, finishing off. Stockton in all kinds of trouble, tries to Dennis Rodman, flop, doesn't get the whistle there. Jordan's in the line. <laughs> Michael Jordan with 19 points in all, 15 have come in the second quarter. Utah at one point led. 6-20, three minutes into the second. And the Chicago Bulls have taken a one-point lead with two and a half left in the first half. And the Utah Jazz also suffering with Carl Malone on the bench after picking up a third foul. Here's Barnes for three. Everything going wrong for Utah. No leadership, horrible turnovers, no offense. An absolutely non-existent defense. Host of tag, guarding Pippen on the switch. Pippen goes right to the basket. And the tip missed by Williams. He stopped him checking the floor as he brought it down in deliberate fashion and then decided to reset. Stockton's got to take over here. Without Antoine Carr, without Carl Malone, he's got to be the offense. Sets it up for Mars for three. Chris Mars off the bat for eight. But Dallas 47. The Bulls 45. But he lost it. Power off the steal. And last touch by Utah. Utah is not taking care of the ball on the defensive end on the few times they do get it. Oh, look at Phil Jackson. In the face of Brian Williams. He just called a 20-second timeout and Phil very upset. John Stockton, when things were falling apart, looked to take it on, him, on himself to get it guys open, but when Scotty Pippen collapsed, that frees up Scotty's man, Chris Morris. Nothing but net on this three. Chris Morris, ecstatic. He should worry about getting back on defense and getting a rebound. Chris Morris has spent seven tumultuous years <laughs> as a member of the New Jersey Nets. It's his second season with uh, Utah. Averaged 10 points a game last season, but uh, had his ups and downs and some disagreements with Jerry Sloan this season. At one point, he was actually escorted off the bench by security guards after Sloan was upset with him. That was earlier in the year. Here's two coach with the alley in tennis for George. Stopped it running the floor. Nowhere to go. A little dish it to Russell. Pippen with the rebound. One minute to go. In the first half. Kukos for three. Yes. Tony Kukos. And the Chicago Bulls lead by one. This is the best the Bulls have looked in a long time. Aggressive, great attacking defense. Kukos stroking threes and then pounding the glass. 
45 seconds remaining in the first half. Foster. Five shot by Greg Foster, bailed out by the terrific play of Ostertag. Utah by one. Good half for Ostertag. He has nine points. Jordan putting moves on Russell and pushed. Well, the Chicago Bulls are in a two-for-one situation. Michael Jordan, knowing the Jazz in the penalty, just dropping his head and going. Nobody by Brian Williams on Ostertag. No way he could. It was Ostertag having the big body between the basket and Brian Williams. As Ostertag has done a good job of following things in and around the basket. How about the Bulls going to the line now? Following these free throws by Jordan, it'll be 22 throws to the line. Only 12 in all of game four. And Michael Jordan, eight of eight at the line. Scotty Pippen getting a rest. Pippen sitting down with eight points. And it must be said, Michael Jordan is not feeling as obvious on his face yet. Playing quickly. And a loose ball foul against the Bulls, so that is number five. They now are over the limit. It's on Williams. Barb, you, you talked about the Bulls getting to the line. Michael missing the second one. Ah, can't believe I got that guy on my team fouling people. But, but the Bulls are the best team in basketball at identifying what they didn't do in the last game and coming right back and changing that. They've done that tonight by getting to the line, by posting up their Pippins and Jordans. Phil Jackson, just a brilliant coach. Well, Greg Foster, a one-time member of the Chicago Bulls, who had the best all-around game of his NBA career, game three on Friday night. That's Adam Keith five-year man from Stanford who's been spotted during the course of this series. This Foster, you see, regular season average about three and a half per game, 11 minutes per game. Starting to get playing time, though, in the Western Finals and in the NBA Finals, playing about 19 minutes a game against the Bulls. Bill Walton, Amar Rashad, Jim Gracie, Michael Jordan, 21 points, although he's looked spent playing despite flu-like symptoms. 17 of his 21, though, came in the second quarter. Look at the middle of light. Uh, Halftime statistics. Uh, the Jazz overall have shot just under 54%. 19 of 33 from uh, two-point range, while the Bulls at about 43% overall, and they have been going to the line tonight in contrast to game four. Only 12 trips to the line. So, as we head to the third quarter, it's the Jazz 53 and the Bulls 49. Back with more in a moment. God, back at the Delta Center, a little update on Michael Jordan as he walked by me coming out to warm up for the second half. I asked him how he felt, and it was the first time I had seen a smile on his face, but the smile was looking back at me like, are you kidding? I am really sick. I asked Chip Shaver, the trainer, he said he's exhausted, totally dehydrated, and a little bit out of it. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right. 
right, thanks a lot. Well, I'm told by the Jazz players that Jerry Sloan really threw a tirade at halftime, screaming at them, unhappy that they were up 16 and then lost the lead. Said we need more defense, transition, keep them off the board. Says we much match the aggression and intensity of Pippen and Jordan. That's why they're going to the foul line. Final thing he told them, guys, 18 deflections in the first quarter, only two deflections on defense in the second quarter. Mark? All right, thanks, guys. As you saw, Scotty Pippen able to open up the uh, third quarter to bring the Bulls within two. Shot clock at five. Russell lost it. And Jordan with Pippen the trailer. Post attack. On the box out with rebound number nine. Shaky fast break by Michael. The Bulls there actually rearranged his shot while in the air. It was the fast break of Chicago with the third quarter in the second quarter. The Jazz 56 and the Bulls 51. We're just underway in the third quarter. Longley got the step. Strong move by Luke Longley. Luke Longley just in too deep. He's got a good left hand. Ostertag cannot relax. He's done that a number of times. Utah by three. Along with Russell. Ostertag up front. Here's Malone getting inside. Uh, in the first half, a lot of great numbers for Utah. Turnovers and fouls killed them, but Carl Malone has got to stay in the game. Malone picked up a, a third foul and sat out a good portion of the second quarter. Shot clock, out of five. Pippen, played by Hornacek. Yes. Uh -huh. Scotty Pippen has 12. The Jazz up by three. Michael Jordan staying on the periphery now in the opening minutes. Remember, in game four, 0 for 4 for Jordan in the third quarter. Only two points in the third quarter of game three. So this is when whatever altitude, fatigue, whatever has gotten to Michael. And Dennis Rodman continues to have his problems with Carl Malone. That was foul number three on Rodman. Jordan turns in, misses that turnaround jumper. Says, my fault, my fault. A lot of walking, standing, leaning over. Say, will somebody please make a shot <laughs> so I can feel better later? <laughs> Question with uh, Jordan, particularly if this is another game that goes down the stretch, uh, will be his stamina when you consider the uh, the flu-like conditions. Malone, open, post attack. Post attack is able to get inside and uh, once again rescued the rebound. He's been controlling the board. 11 rebounds for Greg Ostertag. And the gamble did not pay off. But Utah's standing. They're not cutting. They're not setting the screens. And Harper's doing a much better job than John Stockton in the third here. Oh, the tip by Longley. And Luke Longley is 4 of 4 from the field. He has 18 points. And one stretch in the first half. Utah led by as many as 16. They had a 14-1 spurt in the first quarter. Chicago came roaring back with a 25-8 run in the second. And a sack. Rebound by Pippen. Oh, the crowd looking for the traveling violation. Not even close to traveling. And Pippen goes all the way. Rebounded by Malone. And hands right to Stockton. Oster tag, so huge defensively, forcing misses. Stockton back door. Oh, and Stockton combining. The Jazz up by six, and Phil Jensen calls the time. Once again, we'd like to uh, thank the folks at Miller Brewing for the outstanding views we've been getting here in Utah from the Miller Eagle, the Eagle on airplane developed by Miller to be a, a unique new eye in the sky on 
Sports Television. Well, when the ball goes into Carl Malone, at least once again, John Stockton gets one of these right to the basket. Ron Harper gets on the wrong side, anticipating split, tries to hold on. The perfect pass, and John Stockton with the finish. Remember what Barkley said at the at the half, that Stockton can beat you in so many different ways. Change of pace, change of direction, the ball right on the money, perfect pass, and the big four all delivering tonight. Scotty Pippen, I think, in the th third quarter has been spectacular in the post. They should come back there. And you look at the plus-minus for Carl Malone when he's in the game. The Utah Jazz have been unbeatable. Oh, and Janice Rodman with his first field goal in three games. And his first offensive rebound in this one. The Jazz 63, the Bulls 59, seven and a half remaining in the third quarter. Robin is their first field goal attempt of the night. Our car below, not able to hit the outside shot. Autosack broke it up. Unhappy thought he had picked it off. Rodman, who was told by Phil Jackson to stop shooting the wild ones and get underneath the hoop and get to work, finally a stick back. Dennis Rodman being very polite to the uh, courtside cameraman who was <laughs> in his way, it should be noted, as he uh, inbounded the ball. He was very careful. It's a scary thought to have his note being nice. Travel on Jordan. Bill Oates with the call, and the ball will go back to the Jazz. Well, Michael Jordan unhappy with this pass by Ron Harper, as Ron Harper really never had control of it, tried to get it to Michael Jordan, who didn't have his feet set in the wall. The Jazz with the ball leading by four. Russell eluding Pippen. Rodman very active here in the third quarter. And the Jazz not able to get to their offensive glass. Ostertag was great. Carl Malone's got the three fouls. Has to play very smart here. Nice pass. Jordan to the cutting Longley. And the Utah lead is down to two. Oh, the best job by Luke Longley all series long of moving without the ball. And the double team comes, finding that lane, finding the open seam, and finishing. And Longley, five of five. He has ten points. A mean foul. Against the Bulls, it's on Hoffer, his third. A car below coming to double team, and Rodman just did a good enough job of getting in the way of Greg Foster to enable Luke Longley to find that opening. Correction on that foul, it's Rodman, not Hoffer, so that's four on Rodman. When Stockton runs that UCLA high post cutoff from the guard, you got to step out and bump him. Rodman just tripped him, though. Highly illegal. Play through the third quarter. Shot clock at five. Stockton fires the three. That's the line by Russell. Mark, the Utah offense is not executing. Chicago's defense is pushing them out, forcing them to play one on one, and that's not their game. They got a pass and cut screen away. Well, Hoffa reaching in, looking for the steal. And a foul is called. Stockton's going to cut off right here. Rodman does not even touch him. Little, little stagger there. A little bit of acting right there. My mistake there, Dennis. Whoa, a rare moment for uh, our friend Bill Walton. <laughs> You say a rare public moment. <laughs> there are many private Thank apologies. you, Mar, for clarifying yes. this. <laughs> Howard Isley has checked back in, replacing John Stockton. They double up on Hornacek, was able to find Ostertag. Back for Hornacek. That time mistimed by Ostertag, looking for the tip. Chicago down by two. Jordan got the step. Jordan has time the game at 63. We're approaching five minutes remaining in the third. Malone finding Isley but has to bring it back out. Longley doing a good job boxing out. Arost attack has to come back outside. Shot clock running down. Here's Malone. And Longley rebounds. 
kept alive by Harper. Everything in the favor of the Chicago Bulls right now. The season's on the line for the Jazz. It has come down to a best of three series. The Bulls do have, still do have a home court advantage. Oh. Bulls do. In Chicago, close to tag with 11 points and words between Carl Malone and Brian Williams at the aftermath to the basket by Ostertag. And double technical fouls being handed out by Bill Oaks. Oh, Evan. Well, Brian Russell went up to shoot that basketball, and I think Luke Longley took his eye off it, the defender, and that left Ostertag wide open. Luke Longley, who has been playing well, falls asleep at low left of your screens. Oh, gee, forearm shiver by Brian Williams, who evidently took exception to something before that, but I'm surprised Brian Williams did not get the worst of that. And Williams still talking to Carl Malone. Carl Malone's going to forget about all this and start playing basketball. He has not had the impact that he had early. And the technical was just called on Brian Williams. There was no technical on Malone. So Hornacek uh, hit the tee. Carl Malone walking away as Brian Williams keeps talking. So the Jazz is up by three. Chicago's defense is so good, Marv. They can just shut you down almost at will. Nice play by Hornacek. Jordan had the move on Isley, then Hornacek came over for the recovery. Well, Michael had the mismatch and was signaling to his teammates, swing it around, swing it around, but Jeff Hornacek coming down just in the nick of time to help out Isley to knock it out of bounds. Rodman hearing the booze as he checks back in, replacing Luke Longley. Longley, 10 points on 5 of 5 from the field. Only four rebounds. Brian Williams. Oh, he enjoyed that one. A little stare from Brian Williams. Well, Brian's fired up after that technical foul. An excellent defensive play to knock one away from Malone, and he wanted that one inside. If Utah is going to win this game or has a chance at the championship, it's got to be Carl Malone time. Guys are coming around his back. He's being pushed off the box. He has got to get to the hoop and take over the basket area. He's not doing it in the third. Well, Carl is trying to hold that position, which is where he wants to get it inside, but he's got to protect the passer to make sure they hold possession of the ball. Steve Kerr back on the floor, played nine minutes in the first half, missing on both shot attempts. On Jordan. Bob was looking for a foul, and then on that the second penetration dribble, the foul was called. That's two on Michael Jordan. And you can look at the expression on Michael's face and say, Hey, ref, you make the call. Don't let the fans talk you into a non call here. That was team foul number four on the ball. Jazz do not have any. Russell for Yes. At the age of 11, he's been an important factor in this series. And a loose ball foul indicated. It is on the ball. It is on Rodman. It's number five on Dennis Rodman. It looked like Dan Crawford was first going to call a foul, then going to call no foul, just the ball off the line, and then changed his mind one more time as Carl Malone sold it hard. And it puts Chicago over the foul limit, so Utah to the line when we come back. 
Strike City. A look at Michael Jordan. See the ice bag being applied to the uh, the back of the neck of of Michael, who has been exhausted right from the start, playing with what are being called flu-like symptoms. Dennis Rodman just picked up a uh, fifth foul a, a moment ago, and he's been playing well in this third quarter. So Rodman sitting down, replaced by Jason Caffey, making his first appearance of the night. Carl Malone is. Headed to the free throw line. Malone is just one of three at the line. We have 235 remaining in the third quarter. The Jazz up 69 to 65. In this game five of the best of seven NBA final series. Series tied at two. Malone missing badly on that first shot. A reminder looking ahead on Friday. We hope you join us right here in prime time. Nine o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Pacific Coast time as Michael Jordan and the Bulls go up against Carl Malone, John Stockton and the Jazz in what could be a decisive game six of this NBA final series right here on NBC. So the Jazz now lead by five points. Michael Jordan catching a quick breath here. Rodman with three phantom calls down all reserved in the front court for Phil Jackson. Scotty Pippen. Great play, Brian Russell. Absolutely perfect. running the team at point guard to provide a rest for John Stockton. Caffey up on Malone a bit too aggressively, and the foul on Caffey, so Malone is headed back to the line with the Bulls over the limit. Offense for Chicago, it doesn't happen, but then Brian Russell comes over the top and taps it to himself, the second, the third effort. you got to love those Long Beach State guys. Brian Russell, Bob yes. Gross from the Portland Trailblazers. Oh, I knew there was a trailblazer from the 70s <laughs> tie-in somewhere <laughs> along the line. Yes, Brian Russell, a second-round pick in 93 out of Long Beach State. Came up very big in the playoffs uh, last year, in particular in the Western Conference Finals against the Sonics. The Utah Jazz have not committed a foul in this third quarter. Big reason is the Chicago Bulls have stopped attacking the basket. The Jazz 72 and the Bulls 65. Seven unanswered points for Utah. Michael Jordan on the bench getting a rest. Tony Kukos back on the floor with Steve Kerr. Ryan Williams getting it. Carl got away with it over the back that time. He's playing with three fouls. Can't give up good position to Kathy. And Bill Oaks with a double foul indication. One on Malone, that is number four, and the other on Williams for Brian Williams, his second, and uh, Jerry Sloan pulling Carl Malone. So he sits down with 18 points, six rebounds, and five assists. Isley able to make the recover. Minute 25 remaining in this third quarter. What a second, a quick release. Williams with the rebound. Bulls with the ball down. Seven points. Oh, this is where the Jazz fell apart last time when Carl Malone went out with foul trouble. They've got to keep their poise. And no stop it in the game either. Scotty Pippen is foul. And he was very fortunate. He had lost, lost the handle, but he thought he was fouled before the call was made. Along the baseline a moment ago, the double foul called here. Caffey, his fourth foul there. For Carl Malone, that's his fourth, and now he's got to sit down, I would think, until about the 10-minute mark. There's Greg Foster, played briefly in the first half. Foster checking back in. Foster rebound. Just under one minute left in the third. Utah with the ball by seven, and once again, they are on their feet at the Delta Center. Oh, what a move by Isley, swimming through, but came up with the air ball. Williams whipped on that outlet attempt and was fortunate to recover. Chicago only one 
for its last seven from the field. Pippen with the step. Here's Pippen drawing the foul. Foul on Foster. And Pippen headed to the line. A reminder following the game on most of these NBC stations, your local news, and then the Tonight Show. For those of you who would like to continue with the NBA Finals, we'll have a post-game special as per usual on CNBC. That's immediately following our telecast. The entire cast to uh, recount the game with highlights and of live press conference coverage, guests, and a whole lot more as we look back at uh, tonight's Game 5. That's the NBA Finals post-game special on CNBC immediately following the game. 30 seconds remaining in the third. Utah by 5. Oh, Pippen nearly hit the pocket of Isley. Down to 20 seconds. Five-second differential between the 24 and the game clock. Quarter section. Rebounded by Pippen with 10 seconds in the quarter. second attempt. Three quarters complete here in Salt Lake City. It's the Utah Jazz 72 and the Chicago Bulls 67. We'll be back here in Salt Lake after these messages from your local station. You are watching the NBA on NBC. But if we wind down in game five and head to game six in Chicago, guys, many questions concerning this particular group of Chicago Bulls. Win or lose uh, this series, and for Chicago, it's their fifth finals appearance the past seven season. Well, no matter what happens tonight, Friday, or Saturday, this is still a championship-caliber team. And so why change anything? I don't think there's any question that Scotty Pippen, Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson will be back. However, Dennis Rodman will not do. If your motivation is money, you break it up now and you start looking. If your motivation is to keep something special going, let them play as long as they want. They're all willing to play on one year contracts. And I just think that this team, with the exception of Dennis Rodman, will be back primarily intact next year. And as the fourth quarter gets underway, Brian Williams called for the foul. But still many questions concerning Phil Jackson who has made it clear that he would accept a one-year deal once again, although there's been so much speculation about that, and Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen. Well, I think Phil Jackson wants to ride it out as long as Michael Jordan primarily is part of the Bulls, and as long as Jordan and Jackson are there, that means Scotty Pippen will be there. There's only one other coaching job open, that's the Vancouver Grizzlies, who supposedly have an offer out to Phil. I don't see him taking that under any conditions. I I see him taking a year off before he does that. He'll be back in Chicago. But still, there is, there is the question concerning Michael Jordan. Could he be playing his final games as a member of the Chicago Bulls? We're talking win or lose here. Ryan Williams. Hanging up with Antoine Carr. The Jazz up 74 to 67. This man, Michael Jordan, is still the best player in basketball. He's on top of his game. He is so sick right now. He'd love to be lying down in a bed somewhere, and he's still playing well. Although, had a very quiet third quarter. Chicago's missed seven of their last eight shot attempts. Reach in foul. Charge to Greg Foster. The Chicago Bulls have been in a 2-2 position in the NBA Finals just once during their previous four title runs. That was back in 92 against Portland. And they went out to beat the uh, Blazers four games to two. That was their, their second of four titles. It is 2-2 right now in this game number five. As Michael Jordan cuts it to a five-point Jazz lead. Game six coming up in Chicago on Friday here starting 9 o'clock Eastern, Game 7, if necessary, in Chicago on Sunday night. Chris Mars back on the floor, had some good moments early. Not there, though, coming up short. But he's willing to take shots. And right now, some of these guys from Utah are tightening up a bit. 
How long are you going to go with Paul Malone on the bench? He's looking up at Jerry Sloan and saying, put me in there, coach. Malone playing with four fouls. Well, he's been uh, sitting here at the start of the fourth quarter. And Juan Carr. And here is Chris Mars. <laughs> and that'll buy Carl Malone another 30 seconds or another minute of rest. Time and score will dictate that Carl Malone comes back in. Chris Mars with 11 points off the bench. The Jazz 77 and the Bulls 71 with two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Are you talking about him leaving Marvin, not playing anymore? He's having the time of his life out there. Well, we we uh, talked about uh, that with him uh, the other day. Uh, and I said, could you actually sit out next year? He claimed he could. Uh, uh, whether he's just positioning, we don't know. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan pops it down to Kuko. Kuko for three. Yes. Well, of course, this is not as much fun as baseball. No way. But Jazz leading by three. Well, Tony Kuko might as well only take three-point shots. That's all he's made in the last two games for Chicago. Oh, the pass broke it up. And Pippen able to come up with it on the deflection. Jordan fires for three. Yes. And he's tied the game at 77. And he did it in casual form. And you can see how exhausted Michael Jordan is. No reaction after the shot. Just happy to go to the bench as timeout is called. Poise, confidence, discipline. The exchange between Pippen and Jordan. Once, twice. Right back. You do it, big guy. Pump fake, freezes the defense. The jumper, net. Then he staggers back to the bench, near exhaustion, ready to fall over. He's got his team tied now. <laughs> Where is that bench? He gets there and sits back. And oh. <laughs> they put the ice bag on his neck. He won't even take the Gatorade. He doesn't want to waste any energy. No high fives, no lifting water to his mouth. He is exhausted. A heroic performance by Michael Jordan. He has played 35 minutes. He has scored 30 points. And the game is tied at 77. Carl Malone is back. Here's John Stockton. Chicago can recapture the lead. Utah has led by as many as 16. The Bulls at one point led by one. Russell on Jordan. Anderson cheating over. Shot clock at seven. Jordan shooting. Yes. Chicago 79 and Utah 77. It was his burst of speed to get to the position that set it all up. And then he just outweighted Russell facial. Where's Carl Malone? Malone played by Williams. Illegal defense for the first time against the Bulls. Well, here's this cut across by Michael getting open, wants to really drive, but not a good enough spacing by the rest of the Chicago Bulls, but just that little shake was able to get Brian Russell on his heels. Michael just laboring to get back to that defensive end, just trying to get to the finish line. Brian Williams poked it away. Bulls have outscored the Jazz 25 in this fourth quarter. Jordan with nine of those 12 points. Kukov's coming out to help on a double. Russell for three. Brian Russell with his third three-pointer and Curran Stockton became entangled. They've had a very physical matchup these past couple of games. John Stockton and Steve Kerr, and Kerr got his marching orders from Phil Jackson to be more physical, oh, and that's very tough against the little John Stockton. All Kerr could do was take Stockton down. And double technicals call on Stockton and Kerr. These two guys go back quite some time. John Stockton played at the Gonzaga, had a terrific career. It's a reaching foul. Hugh Evans with the call on Don Hornacek. And Steve Kerr was recruited by Gonzaga. Went out to work out at Gonzaga against John Stockton. And 
changed his mind. Well, ended up in Arizona, yes. Yeah, sucked and torched him there. Steve coming out of the Los Angeles area, Pacific Palisades. And he ends up there on the recruiting tryout trip, and he was embarrassed. Jordan for three. Two shots. We're going to hustle it down and fire. The other nice shot from the Chico. And then Kukos reflected it. Out of bounds. Chicago appearing to have the same problems they had in the fourth quarter of game four, relying so much on Michael Jordan when the other players get the opportunity, unable to deliver. Stockton with the step to set it up for Hornison. Post attack with the rebound. And last touch by the Bulls. It will be Utah ball. We have seven minutes remaining of the fourth quarter. The Jazz up by one. Small front line from Chicago can get beaten on the offensive glass. Brian Williams, Jordan, and Pippen are going to have to do most of the rebounding. And a foul on two coach. For the Bulls, their second team foul. The Jazz also have two. Kukoc gets caught here on this screen, and when he realizes he's dead, he just grabs on, tries to pull Hornacek down. Easy call. Two-shot foul for Hornacek, one of the great free-throw shooters in the history of the NBA. How about Ostertag? 14 rebounds, 7 on the offensive glass. And the Jazz now leading 81-79. There's Greg Ostertag in his second season from Kansas, a number one draft pick. Last year made major strides this season. And this for Hornacek. Chicago with the ball. Trailing by two. Jordan trying to slow things down. You can see him motioning over to Kuko. Jordan with the step and lost him. Brian Williams with the recovery. And another rebound for Greg Ostertag. An unbelievable battle underneath the hoop, Marv. Guys are just flying, flailing away. Ostertag has been the best one tonight underneath the hoop. Malone set the pick. Oh, Kerr tried to draw the foul. Williams broke up the pass. Shot clock of three. Russell from Brady. And stopped him able to ring for. They get the new 24. Ostertag continues to do damage to Chicago on the offensive glass, keeping balls alive. Passed on the three and lost it. Here comes Pippen protecting the dribble, spinning his way, and fouled by Russell. Brian Russell committing his second, just under six minutes remaining. And the fourth timeout taken, but jazz up by two. Miller Genuine Draft presents a classic moment of the NBA at 50. Tonight we look back at Michael Jordan's highest scoring NBA Finals game it was game four of the 93 final series against the Phoenix Suns. Michael Jordan with 55 points, 21 of 37 from the field. The 55 tied Rick Barry for the second most points scored in a finals. Elgin Baylor scored 61 against the Celtics for the Lakers back in 65. In recognition of this classic moment, the Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Burkhard Marshall. Scholarship Fund to check up on the condition of Michael Jordan. Let's check in with Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Marv. I just spoke with Chip Trainer, the Bulls trainer. And Chip says Michael's just still fatigued, totally fatigued. He doesn't know how he continues to play, but as you watch him, he is struggling and, and still out there trying to give it his all. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Ahmad. During that timeout, Jerry Sloan told his team, I'm very happy with this type of effort. It's this type of effort that's going to win the game. Then he looked right at Greg Ostertag and he told him, Get ready for the ball in front of the rim. He says it's coming to you because they're going to be double teaming Carl Malone the rest of the way. Mark? All right, thank you, Jim. And Scotty Pippen to the free throw line. He's four of five at the line. 557 remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Bulls are down by two. What a follow-up to what took place here on Sunday night. The Jazz beat the Bulls in a dramatic finish. 78-73. Look at the big four, led by Michael Jordan. The game on Sunday, the second lowest scoring game in NBA Finals history, but will go down as a classic by virtue of that uh, finish. Utah.
scoring the game's final nine points. And we have another dazzling finish developing here. The game tied at 81. Dennis Rodman back in, playing with five fouls. Carmelo playing with four. Along with a bad pass, but a foul is called. And the Jazz bailed out on that foul. Only six on the shot clock. It's called on Jordan, his third. Utah having a lot of trouble delivering the ball. Michael Jordan grabbing Brian Russell from behind. Carl Malone, just five points and three boards here in the entire second half. Played by foul trouble, he's got four. Both teams with three. Team foul. Pass. And the ball back to the ball. And that scoring slack picked up by Chris Barnes earlier. And Greg Ostertag, both of them with 11 points as Carl Malone scoring is down. situation Chicago four and a 20 remaining Utah with three and a 20 with five minutes to go the score tied at 81 Russell to the midway first attack could not get to it was Jim Gray's report. You got to get the ball to, into Oster Tag's house and in Oster Tag's hands in the front of the rim. As soon as I run out of talk and think at the same time, we can move on with this game. <laughs> Robin setting up with a high post, finding Jordan. Three battle time alone. I hope Jordan, who can barely remain. 32 and a foul called. The push putting Stockton on the floor, but it's a non-shooting call. Team foul number four committed by Chicago. This has been the strategy for Chicago, especially in the fourth quarter, really only in the fourth quarter, running to double-team Stockton to make him pick up his dribble and get the ball out of his hand. Chicago's guard Steve Kerr and Ron Harper have done a much better job on Stockton here tonight than they did in game four. Now who's going to want to shoot here for Utah? Carl Malone, what he had in mind. Carl Malone went, went to the air and then wasn't certain whether he wanted to pass it or shoot it. And that was the end result. Good timeout here by Phil Jackson because he would lose his timeout at the two-minute mark. Michael Jordan needs all the breathers he can get. Championship unless your best player delivers at the biggest moment. Carl Malone in game three was huge, going the, to the hoop all night long. Game four, he settled for the perimeter shot. Tonight, with everything on the line, and again, the Jets absolutely have to win. Carl Malone, 14 in the paint, four points on the jumpers. But again, with just five points in the second half, not enough. But Carl is still not getting those opportunities at that high right elbow, top of the key area, where he can either take or fake that jump shot and then drive it hard. The game tied at 81. And we've been tied at 81 for the last two minutes. And Kerr was pushed. Number five on the lawn. He has he's hurt himself with some bad fouls. Remember number three, which followed a, a poor shot, and then number four put him on the bench for a long time. Well, you, you have to go out to the open man because Kerr, even though he's shooting the ball terribly for three, you got to tell him, but you, you can't give him a foul like that. Carl has always been a reach-in type defensive player. Never really played above the rim on the defensive end. And Aaron Jordan trying to go last. For Russell on the wing. He had uh, stopped it on the other side, but did not see him. We're down to three minutes and 20 seconds to go in the fourth. The game tied at 81. Played by Rodman and double team. Pick it up to the side. Pick up for cover though. Stopped it for three. and 40. 
30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. All game long, Russell forces him left, and then he gives up an easy right hander. Jordan is too good to allow him into the middle of the lane. Long backing run. And a foul against the Bulls, and they are upset. That is number six on Dennis Rodman. Well, the Chicago Bulls defense doing a good job of cutting off Oster Tag on that cut to the basket when Longley goes to the uh, for the double team. Here's the loose ball, the scramble, everybody diving around, and John Stockton calmly with just one second left on the shot clock with the huge three, and Michael Jordan on the move, beating Russell to the right, hanging in the air, and finishing that shot off. And then Carl Malone in the paint, the fadeaway, on the arm, clearly by Dennis Rodman, forcing the shot to be short. And now Carl Malone again at the line with everything to be determined with these two foul shots. On is four of seven at the line. You see the, the stats on Rodman in 23 minutes, seven or eight bounds, only one field goal, two points. He's been replaced by... Tony Kukoc. That's that lack of discipline we were talking about early in the game with Dennis Robin when he picked up a couple of cheap fouls. If you get Carl Malone to take that fadeaway shot, you have to be happy. Just go up and challenge it. You never want to foul on that shot. Utah with a two-point lead. 225 remaining in the fourth. The champ of MVP for Carl Malone. Oh, he barely caught the left side of the rim. Well, fading back and falling back, but he did that the other night and still made one. Carl Malone's guarding Tony Kukos. This is a very difficult matchup for him. Tony is incredibly smart. Team foul number five for Utah. So both teams are now over the foul limit. And Scotty Pippen back to the line. He's six of seven at the line, and he has an opportunity to tie the game. Chicago's now 18 of 26 at the line, so they will certainly have their chances as opposed to the other night. You look at Scottie Pippen through this final series, up and down, playing with the bad foot, the heroic performance game one, a little down, but that was all Michael Jordan in game two. Game three comes back. Kukoc <laughs> came to rescue. Come back to Jordan, he's clapping for it. Chicago trailing by one. Just under two minutes, remaining the fourth. With a one-point lead. Morrison got the step. Stockton for three. They stop by Russell. They get the new 24. And Stockton checking with, with Jerry Sloan. Utah good shape in terms of timeouts. Three and a 20 remaining. Shot clock at 10. Here's Malone. Stepping back for the fairway. Bad shot that is handled by Pippen. There was plenty of time on the 24. And Phil Jackson calling for a pick and roll. Obviously, Michael Jordan to be the ball handler. Down to 15 seconds. Here's Longley with the pick. There's Jordan. Foul. Hit on a reach in. And you can... Just look at the body language on, on Michael Jordan. You get the idea he's having difficulty just standing up. But Ostertag saves the day here as the defense broke down. Carl Malone with plenty of time on the shot clock. He can beat Luke Longley. He's fading away there. He's fading on his baseline shot from down low. He's fading on his free throws. Utah needs a timeout. Jerry Sloan needs to tell Carl Malone to go to the hoop. Foul was called on Stockton. 46 seconds remaining in the fourth. We'll be right back. 
Now look from overhead at the Dallas Center, Salt Lake City, Utah, Marv Albert, Matt Goodness, Bill Walton, Bob Rashad, Jim Gray. Utah has won 23 straight at home, 10-0 at home in the playoffs. You see the timeouts remaining. Michael Jordan playing despite flu symptoms, has been able to hang in looking exhausted right from the opening tip. And he's headed to the line for two shots, 9 of 10 at the line. All the free throws in the first half. 46 and 5 tenths seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. And it's the Jazz 85, the Bulls 84. Short an 83% free throw shooter during the season. And the game is tied at 85. Barb, the Bulls have been here so many times. The huge games, year after year. The confidence, the poise, the determination, the discipline and organization down the stretch, all paying off right now with Jordan masterfully at the line. Jordan able to scoop up the loose ball for the possession with 40 seconds remaining. The game tied at 85. just hanging on along the ropes, but able to hit for a three-point Chicago lead. Beautiful feed, close to tag, cuts it to one. You got a foul right now, you got a foul. Carl Malone, what are you doing? We're down to ten seconds. You got a foul. As they open the floor, and Luke Wortley able to put it home from Tony Kukoc. Three-point Chicago lead with six and two ten seconds to go in the fourth quarter. It's hard to believe that you can lose track of time and score as Carl Malone did there right next to Pippen. He does have five fouls. No excuse. Should have committed one there. Michael Jordan playing on heart and spirit. The missed free throw here. Everybody's standing there. And then the furthest guy from the ball, Michael Jordan, comes up with it. And then he backs it out, they post up Scotty, and then for no reason they double team Scotty down low and leaving Michael Jordan. He knocks down this three, gives him the huge lead, and then the total exhaustion on the bench. Michael Jordan, sucking air, got the back massage from Scotty Pippen. I think Chicago just fouls right here, makes it a free throw game the rest of the way. Now to six and two ten seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Here's the three-point attempt. Now stop to try to back it up. And we get a whistle of two tenths of a second remaining. Now both teams are over the limit. And the foul is called on the Bulls. So Utah to the line. Foul on Pippen. And the strategy here is obvious. The ball's up by three. You got to hit the first and purposely miss the second and uh, hope for the best. Uh, and you can't score on a tip, but I, I was thinking Chicago would foul on the inbounds pass to give up the free throws rather than give Stockton or Hornacek or Russell a look at a three-pointer. I think you got to come with Oster tag the height here to tip over the top on a miss. We don't need to have Hornacek in it. Jeff Hornacek on a 2 of 11 from the field. You have that three point opportunity going for the tie. Both coaches making decisions now. John Stockton to the line, but only two tenths of a second remaining. There will be no catch and shoot follow up. First of all, John Stockton has to make the first one to give Utah any kind of chance at all, but you can score on a tip. Positioning at the line after this first free throw will be critical. Stockton not able to hit, and that will do it because they're three points down. And now he hits the second, two tenths of a second remaining. The inbounds, and the Chicago Bulls have.
have defeated the Utah Jazz to take a three games to two lead. They win it 90 to 88. A courageous, classic performance by the flu ridden Michael Jordan. A performance that I think will go down as one of the greatest of his career because of the situation. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? Michael, one of the great performances, the way you were feeling, you played 44 minutes. It was all about will. Yeah, you know, it's all about desire. You just got to come out here and do what you got to do. We wanted it real bad, you know, and, and me as a leader, I had to come out and do my best and hopefully the team could rally around me and come out and make contributions. Never any doubt down the stretch. How, I mean, how weak were you? I was really tired. I was very weak. At halftime, I told uh, Phil that he used me in you know, spurts. But, I mean, somehow I found the energy. Just stay strong. I wanted it really bad. All right, congratulations on a great game, Michael. Get some rest, Thanks. and we'll see you on Friday. Let's go over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. Scotty, what can you say about your teammate, Michael Jordan? You've seen this guy do everything. Have you ever seen him play under these kind of conditions and this illness? No, I haven't. You know, it was a hell of an effort for him, you know, just to be able to come out and play in this game. And the effort that he gave us today was unbelievable. You know, as his teammates, you know, we should have stepped up and played much better basketball. But we really appreciate the way that he steps up and shows his leadership to our ball club. What did he say to you guys? It looked as though at one point on the bench, like, like he nearly was exhausted and, and couldn't continue. Well, he pretty much was. You know, he felt like he was going to faint. I guess he was pretty dehydrated and just tired. But, you know, he, he gutted it out. And, you know, we, we owe this win to him, man. He, he did everything that he could to carry us. Where did he get this energy? Did he take an IV at halftime or before the game? But this was a desperation game for us. And, you know, we, we, we had to come out and do what we did today and gut it out and play hard defense and just contain this team a little bit better than we did in the last couple games. And, you know, we, we couldn't deal with the sickness, the injuries. We had to play through everything. And some how he was able to find that energy to give us that burst that we needed. 16 points behind in the first half, you come back and you take the lead. What was the thought process on the bench when you were behind by 16 and it looked as though to you guys you may be going home down 3-2? Well, it was pretty much for us to just stay patient, you know, try to get a little bit back out of time and not really try to have any type of sense of urgency of trying to get back in the game and we showed a lot of patience and we were able to battle back in the game before the half as a player in these past two games what does this say about the nba and what we've just seen i mean it's pretty incredible hasn't it been yeah, it's fantastic i mean uh both teams are really gutting it out. The games are coming down to the wire, and, you know, it's a matter of who I'm executing down the stretch. And we made some big defensive stops that made the difference. Uh, at one time, I didn't think we was going to get any defensive rebounds, but we were able to stop them, and finally we were able to take control of this game. You starting to smell that fifth ring? Well, I don't want to get uh, too overconfident right now, even though we're going home, but we're going to have to play this team just as hard right now. They're, they're desperate, so it's going to be a tough game. Scotty, congratulations. All right, thanks. All right, let's send it back to Marv Albert. Thank you very much, Jim. No team has ever been down three games to two of the NBA Finals and won game six and seven on the road. That is the task facing the Utah Jazz. Only six teams have ever come back from a 3-2 deficit. That the task facing the Utah Jazz. They had won 23 straight at home. The last time they lost at home was to Seattle in overtime back on the 23rd of February. They were 10 and 0 at home in the playoffs. But tonight, the Bulls, led by Michael Jordan in a miraculous performance, defeat the Jazz 90 to 88. Tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 noon Pacific, NBC Sports presents the 97th U.S. Open. Then join NBC on Friday in prime time at 9 o'clock Eastern for the Bulls and Jazz in Game 6. Stay tuned on most of these stations for The Tonight Show following your local news. And for those of you who'd like to continue with the NBA Finals coverage, interviews and post-game activities will be available coming up on CNBC. For Matt Dukas and Bill Walton, Ahmad Rashad and Jim Gray, Marv Albert saying so long from Salt Lake City, Utah.